Hey guys, Tony Reed here. Now we all know spring is right around the corner and you're going to need plenty of podcasts on your playlist for those long hours in the field. The one podcast that I'm going to recommend is Farm for Profit. Tanner, Dave, and Corey do a phenomenal job of having a wide range of guests on their show. It might be anyone from a university professor to an estate planner to a marketing analyst. They even have machine repeat on there from time to time. Then once a week, they do a Farm for Fun episode where they sit around and crack a few cold ones and kind of get off the beaten path a little bit. And those guests may come from Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or even TikTok. It's a great podcast. You got to go check it out. They're on all the major players, Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, all of them. You can even go to Google and type in farm, the number four, profit.com and read all about them. They call themselves the mullet of podcast. Go check it out. You won't regret it. That's farm, the number four, profit. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the Straightforward Farming Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Reed, alongside Nick McCormick. And once again, we got the lovely Mrs. Growing Corn alongside us. We're turning this into like a full-time job for you. We thought like maybe exactly. if you were lucky, we would let you in on a couple. <laughs> yeah, you keep showing and up. And now she keeps well, showing up. Well, you had me on and people were really excited about it. You're like, well, maybe we should invite her a few more. Well, that's, you know. that's the key to our success. I give, I give the backstory. I give the real truth about what's I going guess. on here. Which, talking about success, so if you was to go back to February, March of 2020, and said, you're going to be on a podcast with your husband in a year, what would you say? Because I'm in utter disbelief at where I'm at. I, I would I, have laughed hysterically. Yeah, I got on TikTok a year ago. Yeah. I, I, I would have laughed hysterically. I've been like, you guys are kidding me. This is never, ever going to happen. I'm right there with ever. you. I, I would have never. Would, what would you say, Nick, if you said, hey, you're going to be sitting in my basement? Yeah, my wife has been on me for a long time to do a lot of this, and I kept blowing it off because this is not me. And uh, and how do you start it? You know, yeah. how do you, what do you do? How do you start it? And yeah, and it it it's grown and it's been good, and we're having a great time doing it. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I mean, so so what's your thoughts on this whole deal? I've never asked you this. Is my wife? What's what's your thoughts on this deal so whenever you started tiktok i was like okay whatever another your, social media do deal. your videos that's fine no big deal and then as things started going i was like oh they're they're really interested he's getting a lot of people who follow him and like you and i would discuss it in the evenings and i kept telling you i was like well it's because you get on there and you are the same person on those videos as you are when you come home every single day you you say exactly what you think and if they like you great if they don't well that's fine too you you don't care it is what it is well we've know? talked in the past that truthfully the way i talk in there is the way we talk to our friends yeah, yeah. I, Ex I normal conversation yeah if nick calls me i pick up the phone hey dick bag what's going on and that's that's just the way <laughs> it, it is yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so, like, as things progressed and kept going on and, like, then everyone was like, please insult me. Please do this. And I was just, and they're like, I felt like sometimes people thought you were putting on. And I was like, no, this is exactly who he is every single day. And you're not one of those guys who wakes up every single day and is like, oh, I've got 10,000 more followers or I'm whatever. You're like, you know what? Hey, I'm out here. If you like what I'm putting out there, that's great. If you don't, that's fine, too. I How, don't really care. And you can vouch for this. I'm not lying a bit. How many times have we either you know been laying in bed of a night, whatever, and you're like, hey, you hit 165,000 followers a day. And I'm like... And you're like, I did? Really? I, I, I don't watch any of that. I could care less as to if my videos get any views to the followers. I don't care. I truly don't. So to all you people listen, I don't give a shit if you watch my <laughs> stuff or not. I don't. That's not why I'm doing this. And but I think it's just, it's fun for you. It is. It, 100%. Too, it's too many people fun. get wrapped up in it and they try too hard. And it, right. And it, it's obvious that you're trying too hard. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Whenever you watch videos, you can tell people who are just out there being themselves, saying exactly what they think, 
and then people who are just trying to please every single audience out there. And you're, you're always going to be drawn to the people who are being themselves because, of course, you want to see someone who's saying exactly what they think and not putting on airs. Yeah, and, and you guys can vouch for this. And this this podcast ain't about me or to, to toot my heart, but honest to God, the way you see it on there is the way I talk and have. For, for sure. It is. I mean, no that's what, and, and and you're no different. I mean, you yeah. absolutely. You know, and and you don't you don't display it publicly as I do. You you run a business. I mean, you got to be a little more yeah. reserved to some degree. But as far as behind the scenes, or if you come to my house, yeah, you know, might be a little different. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But <laughs> I just throw it out there, and it is what it is. And. I but I, once again, I think that's why people are interested in what you have to say because they know that if they come to you and say, hey, what do you think of this? You're not going to lie to them. You're going to say, well, I think that is a really great piece of equipment or I think that is crap. Yeah. You need to you need to steer clear. And I think so many times people, they just want that honest opinion. Yeah, and I, and I had a very world-renowned company contact me in December about demoing some machinery this coming spring and want to know if I would pull a tillage tool of theirs. And I said, I'm on board with it. I have no problem with that. But I said, I'm telling you right up front, if it's a piece of shit, I'm calling it that. Yeah. And if you're fine with that, I'm fine with that. But don't bring it if you're not willing to take the heat. Yeah. And they back like they're still interested, but nobody's really committed. And, yeah. and I don't know what I don't care. I'm, I, I am not going to go make a YouTube video or whatever and sing this thing's praises if it's a piece of junk. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not. I don't care. I'm not. And yep. I just I just believe in... I've, I've always called a spade a spade. As long as you've known me, mm -hmm. I call a spade a spade. True. I don't care who it is. Even if it hurts, you, you call well, that a spade tough a spade. Love. Tough love, Carolyn. Exactly. Yeah. You're lucky to make the cut. <laughs> and oh, trust me. He the stuff, me the stuff he said about you when he first met you, I mean, it was brutal. <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. <laughs> I'm sure. But have you ever noticed, though, how people always say, well, I'd rather you say it to my face and say it behind my back. And so you say it to their face, then they get pissed. It's like, well, you just told me to say it to your face. Yeah. And I did, and now you're pissed. <laughs> Most people don't mean that. They want they well, want you to say it to their face, fault. but they want you to sugarcoat it a yeah, little bit. Well, make we're it not nice. the place for sugarcoating. Uh, no, no, and yeah, absolutely, you are not the place to come to for sugarcoating <laughs> at all. You will call it exactly the way it is. If you want sugarcoating, that's Mrs. Growing Corn. Yeah, exactly. Yep. I will, I'll sugarcoat it, powder yeah. it. I'll yeah. do all the she's things. A, she cares more about being loved. Yep. <laughs> she's yeah. a pushover. If John Deere come out and seen her lawn mower, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you've really taken good care of this over the years. It really looks nice." She'd be like, "Oh." Yeah, it's it's great. I really like my hood that's not there. And you know, she would just go go along and get along. She's fine. No, I just try to be nice about things. I, but but you've always cussed me all the years we've been together, which is sixteen now, almost. Yeah, about how and she always give me all this shit. Oh, oh, everybody just loves Tony because for the most part, people around here do because. Who I think where you I, stand. That, yeah, exactly. It's not one of them where you got to lie to this person, then you got to lie to cover up the lie. So most of the people around here, the ones that don't like me, will flat tell you that guy's a fucking asshole. Fuck him. And I'm fine with that. But the vast majority of people like it because... Well, I think, like, as much as everybody wants... They think they want you to sugarcoat things and tell them what they want to hear... There's a level of respect when someone comes out and says, I don't like you. I thought you did this X, Y, Z wrong, whatever. They respect that about you. And so even though they may not agree with your viewpoints or where you're going, they know where they stand with you. And so they respect that. And so that's why they like you. Could be. I just I just don't think you should just go whichever way the wind's blowing and, oh, oh take, today the crowd's over here, so that's what we're going to do right. and tomorrow and Fuck it, I'll stand out in the middle of the ocean alone. I don't care. Go <laughs> on, me, man. We'll do it. I would agree with but, that. I would agree. But that. and maybe, maybe I do take it a little too far. I don't. I don't know. I mean, no. I. I mean, but I think most people know that you're not trying to. You're not trying to be mean. You're not trying to hurt their feelings. You're just telling them exactly what you think. And, and I think you'll vouch for this. So let's let's say I take a tractor to my local John Deere dealer. And so, okay, just like our brand new planner, there was an issue with it that I found it was screwed up and it, it was an honest mistake, whatever. And I went and told them, yeah, bring it out. And that's fine. You know, I didn't blow, you know, some guys just immediately just yeah. get pissed over the lease stuff. 
And, you know, I took it out there. It's fine. You know, we're not in the middle of busy season. Yeah. They'll get it get fixed. Get it fixed. No big deal. Yeah. Now, if I get it back again, then I'm going to go in. I'm going to bark a little bit louder. Probably yeah. still not going to fly off the handle. But the third time, then it's fucking game on. You know, I've had enough now. <laughs> you know, you fucked me twice. Now we're going to get it yeah. fixed. And But I, I really do. I give people the benefit of the doubt. I'm not just one of these guys that just blows up on the first little whim that this guy screwed me. Unless it's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound like I'm an abusive husband. <laughs> I sometimes wake up and I'm like, am I in an abusive relationship? No. I don't know. No. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> no. You you just get like, if you want to know where you stand with anybody, work animals with him. That's what no. I tell everybody. Oh, yeah. And There's truth in I that. am the most patient person you will ever meet in the entire world. But if we're out there working goats... I will fly off the handle just as easily. Well, I, I, I have to leave man. my concealed carried weapon in the house <laughs> yeah. when we work animals because after yeah. 10 minutes, they're all dead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel I'm your done. pain there. When yeah. we first moved out here, we had like 20 chickens and the pen we had set up was just crap. They all got out. So there we are trucking through 36 acres of pasture trying to collect all of these chickens. Yep. He completely flies off the handle. I'm shooting them all. I'm done. Whatever. I calmed him down. It wasn't 10 minutes later. I was like, forget it. We're done. Shoot them all. And <laughs> then he calmed me down. And, you know, yeah. So. And that's what makes a relationship work. <laughs> Exactly. It is. It is. You need to work animal. If you want to marry someone, that should be a prerequisite. Yeah, work some animals. Let's go work some animals together and see how we work together. But see, to me, it's always the little things with me. Like, I could come home after a hard day's work, open the kitchen drawer where the forks are supposed to be, and there's no forks, and I'll slam the fucking drawer, and God damn it, no fucking fork. We got 400 forks in this house, and not one fucking clean fork, and stomp out and raise holy hell. But I can go outside, and I'll be like, hey, the barn's on fire. You need to do this. You go over here. You do this, and it's a very coordinated attack, and we're, yeah. all, we're yeah, all calm. Exactly. Yeah. So it's the little shit that I freak out uh, yeah. over the big stuff. I can remain calm, and it's like, okay, we're going to get this done, and we're good to go. I think it's a male thing. Yeah. I think it is. I mean, what, what's some of the stuff that, like, just infuriates you? Like, the little stuff. You know? Oh, I, sometimes I just want to complain, right? So my mm -hmm. wife like, oh, you're all upset about this. I'm like, but with me, that's like a 30-second deal. So sure. I'm going to be mad for just a little bit, but I'm going to be over it really quick. Right. Where, and not judging all women, but women in general, they're mad for, like, 36 hours. Because we take it personally. Yeah. Where Tony, you know... It's like Tony runs into my truck in the parking lot here. I'm like, tch, tch, dude, what'd you run into my truck? And he's like, hey, you need a cold beer? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then we're good. Yeah. You know, I, I get over it very quick. I get, I'm more easily to anger than I should be, but I get over it pretty quick. I don't generally hold grudges. I forget. Well, I forgive pretty easy. I don't necessarily forget, but I forgive very easily. And it is what it is. But women are women hold grudges forever. It's like, if, oh, some if, girl in the second grade like tied my <laughs> shoes in a knot, and I, that that chick is never, you know, they're dead to them. It's like, oh, you know, Tony did whatever to me fifteen years ago, and here we're making podcasts. I yeah. don't care. Yeah, you know, exactly. Nobody cares. If, if you want to make my wife go from zero to orbit, this is how you do it. Six thirty in the morning, the alarm goes off, and you're like, hey, hey the alarm goes off. And then she rolls back over. And then at 6.45, you're like, hey, the alarm went off. It's fucking Grumpy Tiger <laughs> Deluxe. Rawr. Not a morning person. Yeah. 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 You want to make me mad? Set an alarm. My wife will attest to this. Nothing makes me madder than an alarm. You want to know what time you want to get up? Just tell me. I'll wake up at that time. I don't need an alarm. I've proved this fact to her time and time again. It infuriates her. I'm like, you just tell me what time you want up. I'll wake up magically at that time. I have an internal clock. I don't need an alarm. Nothing is more annoying to wake up to than that. Nee, nee, nee. Oh, yeah. Just tell me what time you want up. You want up at 543? I'll wake up at 542, tap you on the shoulder, be like, hey, time to get up. <laughs> Just burns her to no end. Not but right. I, I cannot stand yeah. an alarm clock. I hate yeah. them. Yeah. Now, if I'm going to be out or desperately need to get up at a certain time, I will set an alarm clock in advance, but I'm going to wake up five minutes before that, knowing it's going to go off, shut it off, get up, be dead. You're a very lucky person. <laughs> yeah, I am lucky in a lot of regards. That's just an internal clock deal that 
I don't know why, but I, I nothing annoys me more than that. I mean, and I know this is a bad habit, and I know, like, I've read all the books. I know that I'm doing all the things wrong, but if I have to be up by 6.45 in the morning, I'm going to start my alarm at 6 a.m., oh, and I'm going to hit snooze the every snooze 10 minutes me. until 6.45. I'm not a more. I can stay up a lot easier than I can get up. I can do either one. You just got to tell me what we're doing. But the alarm clock thing annoys me to no end. Like, if I was a dairy farmer, I'm going broke the first week. I'm done. I'm out. I'm My out. family despises the fact that when I wake up, I'm up. I'm good yep. to go. I'm chatty. I, let's talk. And my wife's like, hey, I need him coffee. Don't, don't bother me. Don't talk to me. I'm like, hey, but we're up. So let's let's yep. converse. Let's get it going. Yeah, let's get it going. The and last thing I want to do is life. talk to anybody at 6 o'clock in the morning. No, it didn't do bother not me. talk to me. Do it not. doesn't bother me. I generally pester the shit out of the kids you at 6.30 in the morning. And it's terrible. No, I love to pester my kids. Oh, yeah, they get just Yeah, it just burns them, yeah. yeah. The, my daughter loved it. Well, I don't know if she loved it, but the older she gets, edging into those teenage years, yeah, more annoyed by it. My son still enjoys it, for the most part. But, yeah, I'm, once I'm up, I'm up, and I'll pester anybody. It doesn't bother me. If you don't like it, I'll call somebody that does. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. Usually when I wake up, I'm ready to roll. Oh. No, not once right. I'm up, I'm up. No. Nope. I'm good to go. Yeah, not old grumpy tiger. No, she's not me. I she's mean, on the struggle box. If you try to mess with me at 6 o'clock in the morning, I will slit your throat. We're done. I'm going to start calling you. <laughs> you should. I won't answer. I assure you, I won't answer. I'll put it on silent. I'm going to start letting you know that your snooze is going <laughs> off. Time to get up. Oh, and it's even better today. She comes in the bedroom at like, well, probably 10 till 7. And she's like just in shock. I don't know what you'd call it. She's like... I'm almost out of Starbucks coffee. I'm going to have to go back and bring it Folgers. <laughs> <laughs> Which, that is a dilemma. Yeah. Once you've had Starbucks coffee and you go to go back to Folgers, it's like, yeah, this is this is going to suck. Yeah. She I had, solve that. So here's coffee. the best part. He never drinks coffee. He's never been drinking coffee. So I was like, I got enough coffee for a pot to last me for the day. So I pour my first cup. Here he comes in, drains the entire rest of the pot, and I was like, I need three cups of coffee today. I used to drink coffee by the gallon until I got Lyme disease. Now I can drink uh, one day a week, roughly. Yeah. And, that's yeah. and about today like was the day. Yep. I tell him I'm running out of coffee. Today's the day he's like, oh, I'm like, well, I got to get on the good shit here. I mean, yeah. usually, usually Saturday morning, for the most part, is my coffee day. But I had to, yeah. so I'm like, oh, you're down to Folgers. I'm getting in on the Star Rock deal for this bus. Please. Yeah, no doubt. It should be here tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I had to drink Folgers this afternoon. And I made it one cup through that, and I was like, fine, it's forget it. disgusting. I don't understand the coffee thing, so. Hey, you have not had that. coffee till you've had Star Rock coffee. Trust me. Uh, it's great. My wife's had a little bit of it. She loves it. But I, coffee and me are not old friends. Like I said, when I'm up, I'm up. I don't need coffee. I'm good. What annoys me about coffee, it's not even some, it, it has nothing to do with the coffee. It's coffee people. That's right. So coffee people annoy me to no end because this drink is so great that they're going to carry it around for like two hours. Mm -hmm. But if it's so great, you just chug it down. You never see a guy who's drinking Bud Light that's carrying it around for two freaking hours. True. He's carrying around 15 of them for two hours, but he's, you know, drank one, put it yep. down, drink, grab another one. Coffee drinkers carry it around forever. And then my biggest pet peeve is coffee drinkers always want to leave that shit sitting around. And then it gets that film on it. And that makes me want to hurl my mouth. They're setting it down. Oh, now it's too cold. we gotta, we got to dump this, warm it up, whatever. That wears me down at some point. I'm like, if it's that good, just drink it and move on. But you I, can't because it's too hot. And it's too cold. It's too hot. And it's too cold. It takes forever to drink it. Nick, I, think I, I think you're going to have to leave at this point. I think, I think I, you need to get out. Right I now. will tell you this is coming <laughs> from a... That. From a smoker like myself, when you're drinking coffee and having a cigarette, it's like shitting a roll of toilet paper. It is the most <laughs> smoothest thing you've ever had in your life. It is phenomenal. I, I, and it, I don't the know last I, time I poured myself a cup of coffee, which wasn't that long ago, actually, for some reason, I, because I, my, I was trying to appease my wife at some point, even though it actually ended up going the other way. I'm like, I will pour myself a cup of coffee, and we will sit here together, and we'll drink this coffee. So I poured a cup of coffee. I got it part right in my mouth. I started to smell it. I'm like, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. Can't even. There's can't something even, wrong can't even with sip. you. Can't even. My brother can't drink it either. Does your dad drink coffee? My mom and my dad drink coffee like it's mad. Really? My brother and I, neither one of us drinks. Uh, between the two of us, I bet we haven't drank a cup of coffee, cumulative, in 25 years. 
No kidding. Between the two of us. I've seen my dad drink one beer in his life and maybe just a few cups of coffee. Mm -hmm. I've seen coffee. My parents drink coffee. My wife drinks coffee. My brother's wife, wife drinks coffee. My brother and I, we don't drink it at all. So I get the part way to my mouth. I realize I can't do it. The smell's horrible. I can't handle it. I'm done. My wife's like, I can't believe you're wasting that coffee. I'm like, I didn't drink any of it. It's still good. Here's the cup. Yeah. Totally annoyed by it. Can't have it. I just wasted this coffee. I'm like, well, but because I didn't you poured it in the it. cup, and now it's gonna get cold, and it's just she hasn't had hers yet. I can hand you the cup. My arm is not broke. But it needs to go in my cup. I can dump cup. it into your cup. It doesn't matter. I'm not gonna drink his cup of coffee. I'm not. A, I'm, I just. I'm not a coffee drinker. I'm just, I'm just For me, 100%, it is a comfort thing. It's getting that cup and it, that warm that warm cup of coffee in the morning. It's just, that's what I need to start my day. Hmm. I don't know. I don't need that. For it's, me, it's and breakfast. And then it's all the for caffeine. Me, for me, it's breakfast. It. I don't need a warm cup of coffee. What I need is breakfast. Today. I don't need it breakfast, orange. so maybe that's it. We should work on that. What, what I need is a full container of bacon made, three eggs. Chewy bacon. Do you like crispy or chewy bacon? I got to have chewy bacon. Can't be crunchy. Crunchy bacon is crap. Exactly. Yes. If your if your bacon is so stiff it break, my dad likes his. Like if you hold it out, it just snaps into and falls into no. crumbs. That's bacon bits, and that's yeah. for a salad. That yeah. is not for eating. That's glass. That's it glass. Shatters. I like mine a little chewy. Yep. Exactly. A little chewy. I now, ironically, I don't like my steak burnt. Well, that's a. I like my steak more more on the well side than the raw side. Attaboy. I like my bacon a little chewy. Attaboy. Meat is made to be cooked. Damn right it is. Bacon, nah, I don't need it. I, if it's if it's shattery, I don't like that. My wife, she'll walk out in the pasture and just carve off a steak <laughs> and eat it on the way to the house. It's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not on, on that. I'm I'm actually, on that. so I have a really good story about this. So our son, Henry, is the only one in our house who will eat steak. The girls aren't don't care about it, and he obviously You should work on that. You're so complaining about my coffee drinking. I Your made. Eat steak. No, my little girls don't. It's different. So I made some steaks on the grill the other day, and Henry was home today, and they're, of course, rare, medium rare, and he's always ate them well because that's how his dad ate them, so that's how he should eat them. And he was kind of looking at it, and I was like, if you want to take a bite and try it, go for it. He took a bite, and he, like, chewed it. Literally, his eyes lit up, and I said, it's way better than your dad's, isn't it? And he goes, it is. And I was like, yes. How about telling the real rare. farmer eats it well done? <laughs> now, I will say, the older no. I get, the rarer I can eat it, mm -hmm. and the dimmer the light, I know this is dumb, but the dimmer the light is, like some restaurants are barely lit, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. sure. you know, you take your parents to this restaurant, and like, they can't see the menu, you got to get your cell phone out, it's you know, shake it twice to hold the light on it for them so they can see it. The darker it is and the older I get, the more rare I can eat my steak. But if it's full light, like, you know, norm, normal stuff should be, I, if there's like blood running out of it, I, I can do it now more than I could as a kid. I'll never forget this when I was a, a real little kid. Our Heston rep took us, took my family out for steak. I'll never forget the butt chew I took from my dad. I ordered a steak. I ordered medium well. It come out medium rare at best. It was it was bloody, and I was like six ish. Couldn't do it. I'm out. Can't do it. And Dad's like, you don't ever order steak, you know, and don't eat it. You know, da, da, da. it's expensive, et cetera, et cetera. If you're not gonna eat it, don't order it, et cetera. You know, whatever. And, well, they didn't really cook it how I asked. If they yeah. cook it how I asked yeah. them to cook it, I'd eat it. You know, exactly. if they'd have made it like Mom makes it, I you, you know. carve off what you want to ride the rest <laughs> home. <laughs> exactly. I'm like I'm eating around the edge. Or in the middle is a little raw, but uh, the older I get, the more I can do that. But still, uh, I've seen enough meat to classes me, to, to know me, a, that ain't right. A rare steak would be just like if I put mozzarella sticks in the deep fryer and pull them out after two minutes. The outside's good and hot, and then when you bite into it, it's completely frozen in the middle. It's like, no, I'm out. That just tastes like shit. I'm not yeah. doing it. I, I'm out. No. I like my food hot. Nothing annoys me more than my family's king of exactly. this. Exactly. Food, I'll, I'll, I'll that's make, why God invented fire. Not for yes. light, not for heat, is to cook your food. Do you know what they call a fucking rare grilled cheese? It's a fucking cheese sandwich. <laughs> yeah. A cheese sandwich, well done, is a grilled cheese. That's true. 
Plain and simple. Nothing annoys me more than if I'm if I'm grilling something for my family and they're like, oh, we'll make some sides. No, those should have been made already because I'll yeah. eat my meat now. I want it hot. I want yep. it now. I It's probably been two or three years ago. I got a quarter pounder meal at McDonald's. And it was, I mean, this son of a bitch was very pink inside. Yeah. After about three bites, I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. I can't do yep. it. It was nasty. I threw it away. I haven't ate one since. I can eat Big Macs, triple cheeseburgers, double cheeseburgers, whatever. The quarter pounder. I'm Actually, done. I got a really ruined. funny story. About it's this. like circus peanuts. It fucking ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! And circus peanuts are my most favorite thing in the entire world. Are you Those serious? Those peanuts are oh my king. god! I love them. I would eat an entire flock of peeps before I eat fucking <laughs> circus peanuts. No, I that love is the nastiest. Peanuts. Oh my gosh! They're so good. No. So, Fuck no. Anyways, I have a That's really funny story about this. That's but go ahead. Another story bef- about um, before you and I were actually dating, you came in the restaurant and we were absolutely slammed busy. Do you remember this? I don't remember this. Of Tell course me. you don't. Tell us in. So, we were slammed busy. I was waitressing and you ordered two cheeseburgers and an order of fries and I gave you your cheeseburgers and you got halfway through your burgers and they weren't cooked well. And really? you and you called flagged me down and you were like, These aren't done and I apologized and I had to go get you two more cheeseburgers. Of course, because che- this is what burns my ass. Yeah. People people ask you, oh, how do you want your cheeseburger cooked? There's only one way you can cook a cheeseburger, and that is well. Yeah. If your cheeseburger is pink in the middle, that's yeah. not that's not servable. No. That's like having a tire with three pounds of air in it. Yeah. That's not usable. Exactly. Because Just to me, agree. you know, what's a steak? Roughly, no. what's a steak? Roughly an inch thick, roughly. Depends, yeah. A fucking cheeseburger is a quarter of an inch to maybe a half. Steak can be rare in the middle. I get that. It didn't touch anything. Hamburger has been ground. It's touched a bunch of surfaces. I've taken enough meats class, cut up enough animals to know. Hamburger is meant to be cooked well. Exactly. It's the only way you can have serve hamburger. Yeah. It shouldn't even be an option. When they, when you go to a restaurant and they ask you, how do you want your cheeseburger? And you answer anything but well, tack hammer, whack, right to the forehead. You have answered wrong. You pay 20 bucks and you're asked to leave. Yep. That's your only choice. I agree. I agree. You, you cannot order a cheeseburger. No. Rare. There's no other way. Medium rare, whatever. If it's pink in the middle, the cheeseburger's not cooked, you're going to die. Thank you. I can Thank assure you, if I go to a restaurant and they ask me how I want my cheeseburger cooked, I'm going to tell them. You're like there. Chuck Weldon. You eat raw hamburger. I don't eat raw no. hamburger. That's what you're doing when you eat a meat I, well cheeseburger. I just like meat that is not burnt to a crisp. And you don't have to burn a cheeseburger to cook it all the way through, Carolyn. You're doing you it wrong. You don't. Trust me. But whenever I eat it, the thing is, whenever you cook a burger that is so well done like that, you're getting rid of all the flavor. No, you're not. You're getting no, you're also flavor. getting rid of the salmonella and the E. coli. <laughs> exactly. You know, all the stuff that's touched and the so whole process of being ground. you guys have to have hand sanitizers smeared on your shit. Yeah, exactly. You get rid of all the shit. That I don't use hand sanitizers anyway. So. Yeah. This is true. No. Now, no. I understand the whole Hank Hill... What, is some, what do we do if somebody asks for their steak well done? We ask them politely but firmly to leave. Okay, on a steak. Uh, you can make that argument. On a cheeseburger, there is one choice and one choice only, and that is cooked. It's, there's only two options with the cheeseburger. It's either cooked or it's uncooked. Yeah. If it's pink, it's not cooked, you're done, you're out. I'm not into raw meat. I'm not a cat. And I will say, like, for a cheeseburger, I don't want it pink in the middle. But yeah, that's what you gave me at the restaurant. That's what you did. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. cooking. I was waitressing. Oh, well, no, no, you took the ass chewing for it <laughs> and still like, married me. Actually, you were very nice about it. You very politely See, said. That's because like, it was your first time. Had that been the third time? <laughs> exactly. There would have been Just repercussions. Just what I was going to say. I was going to say, how many times did you get bad food at my grandma's restaurant? That was the only time. Exactly. So. Yep. But like he yep. said, the third time, your ass would have been grass. <laughs> it was on. We were absolutely slammed busy. So. Which, normally I got burritos and, and good stuff yeah. there. He always got the burrito. Yep. And he always got I usually got the cheeseburger and soup. And she was always eyeing me, leaving her phone yeah, number. Yeah, no oh, doubt. Leaving her yeah. phone like, number. Good on the Lord. Can you be more obvious about it? Mm-hmm. I would be 100% honest. There was way too many people. Sorry. <laughs> I had no time for that. <laughs> sure. yeah, that's not true, people. Yeah, that's not true. Exactly. It was, it was, was completely yeah. obvious. Yep. It was terrible. Wasn't even her day to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's Tony, okay. Tony's truck pulls it in. She comes out of nowhere. Every day was my day to work. I literally <laughs> worked seven days a week. Let's be honest here. Yeah, keep in mind, the restaurant was only open six. Yeah. People, it, she's yeah. totally we were lying. Open on I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. No. It's your story. Tell you how, tell how you I will tell you. Yeah, you whatever. Know. Raw hamburger, Carol hey, doesn't love. Here okay. we are 15 years later, and who's cooking your cheeseburgers? I am. It well so. done, my exactly. name. Exactly. I got yeah. you trained. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't putting up with this shit. He yeah. thinks they're well done. He can see pink from brown, Carolyn. He can't. Yeah. Hey, the lights are dim in here. <laughs> but, but tell him. I keep the lights dim in the house for a reason. Remember when I was going through my Lyme disease deal? Old little Miss Health Nut here thought, yeah. We're going to slip some turkey here in the old tacos. Oh, or whatever yeah. it was. I took one bite, and I'm like, what is this yeah. shit? Yeah. Shit. You did uh, not. You didn't notice for at least two weeks. No, I uh, bullshit. You didn't notice for two weeks. It you was didn't not say two anything weeks. for two weeks. <laughs> and she's like, damn it, he noticed. Yeah. Nothing <laughs> annoys me more. Was turkey bacon okay? Turkey I, turkey no. meat, when it's cooked, and I'm not knocking turkey first, but turkey meat, when it's cooked, smell er, tastes like you took beef. You cooked it and then set it on the deck in the sun for about three, four days, and then brought it back in and yeah. reheated it and then served it. I can smell that a mile away. I'm not. I'm not big on eating birds. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I hear I'm you. Just, I'm not. I hear you. I like chicken all day long. <sighs> There's beef. no shortage of beef. I'll just I'll stick with people. the beef and the pork. Since we had, since we got our half of beef, I eat steak two to three times a week now. Chicken. Yeah. Chickens are for eggs. I love eggs. I'll eat yeah. the shit out I'll of eggs. I'll eat eggs all day. I eat the shit out of chicken skin. Yeah. When you start getting into the meat, it's like, eh, yeah, a few I'll bites into that. If you could find a way, and I realize this should be called chicken fried steak, but it's not quite the same thing. But if you could take actual steak, if you could take filet mignon, cover it in KFC breading of oh, chicken. Unbelievable. You <laughs> could be a millionaire, Carolyn. You could. That would take it over the top. If it's cooked properly, well done on the, or medium well on the steak. And when, this, when this podcast makes a million dollars, we're going to have the chicken skin Fast and everybody's gonna be invited. <laughs> yeah. All we're gonna eat is chicken skin. Chicken skin. And the rest of it, it's the best part. The, nope. the rest of it, the there'll chicken. be plenty of it. The, the rest of us donated to the food pantries. All we're doing is peeling no. the skin and eating. Yep. The chicken Pass is what you on. use for chicken noodle soup and yeah. chicken salad. But that's all that stupid shit that we don't care about. We yeah. want the stuff that's clogging that's your all arteries. All I'm eat. looking for meat and potatoes, Carolyn. Yeah. No. You can't maintain a figure like this. There is nothing better than going to KFC with mashed potatoes, a big old slab of gravy right in the middle. Which kind of gravy? Brown or white? When it comes to Dunkin' Chicken, brown. KFC, you don't have choice, bro. Peel the old skin off, right through the gravy, and then eat it. Yeah. I cannot Phenomenal. stand brown gravy. It has to be white gravy. I like white gravy, I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. Biscuits and gravy. You're, you won't you go gravy. upstairs, have a raw cheeseburger with some white gravy. <laughs> I'll eat any kind of gravy. White gravy is the I'll best. eat white, I'll eat brown. But if you're going to tell me brown's no good, I yeah. don't know. I'm brown not sure is we can not be my friends. favorite. Brown is good for dipping stuff. Biscuits and gravy, I'm eating white gravy. Yes, exactly. Well, there was no such thing as biscuits and gravy with brown gravy. Well, maybe there should be. Maybe there should you be. You have no other choice. Because the whole purpose of brown... So let let's, me, start the, let's start the biscuits out. and brown gravy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we can take this on a whole so level. The whole point of brown gravy is... You're to making, dip stuff in. That's you're making it with a broth. Whenever you're making sausage and biscuits gravy, you're not using a, a broth. Okay, well, I'm aware broth. of how it's done, but you earlier said that brown gravy was basically crap. Exactly. So I'm just saying I'm not a fan. I'm I'm gonna actually just make you guys really make kick me out. I'm not a fan of gravy in general. Oh my god. You're done. Get out. You might as well say you don't like beer. Yeah. I, mean, I, that, love, beer. Yeah. I love beer. I love beer. Next thing you're gonna start singing a Canadian national anthem. So we yeah, have to exactly. Go. <laughs> we're done. Once you go O Canada and upstairs, yeah. we're we're done here. So I view gravy kinda like I view soda. It's fine, but it's not. There's nothing good about it for you, so you don't. We don't care it. what's good for you. I do though. But That's if you're taking brown gravy and dipping KFC chicken skin in the brown gravy, it's phenomenal. Oh my gosh, no, Carol. Literally, that makes me want to vomit. You're concerned about what's good for you, yet here you are hanging out with us, which <laughs> exactly. clearly is not good for you. Exactly. And we'll have to take five smoke breaks, thanks to Carolyn. Yeah. That's fine. She's a chain smoker. You guys can do all of that. That's fine. 
I'll be over here. No carbs, no gravy, no, no carbs. Soda. You're backing me on the fact that noodles belong on mashed potatoes. Absolutely. Of course they do. I'll do that. I'll do that. Only, only some weird people who I married think that that's not normal. That's normal everywhere except for next to the river in Illinois. Oh, noodles, corn, and gravy. Yeah, absolutely. Throw it all together. All that's all good. That's all, all good. Mixed. All all good. mixed. Yep. Every bit. I agree with that. Any starch Absolutely. you can throw together matches another starch. Actually, good to go. I'll do that like once a month. I'll have a meal like that. But Actually, macaroni like and cheese and corn mixed is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mix them together. I can see that. It's like it's like when you take candy corn and peanuts and make a peanut. Oh, my gosh. That's a Nothing peanut. is good with candy corn. Oh, Those candy corn. Is, I love candy yeah. corn. Candy I corn. Eat raw candy, candy corn. corn to me is what peeps are to you. No, no. I'll eat raw candy corn. I'd really eat by raw the corn. bushel. I love it. GMO corn and all. I'd, eat, I'd rather eat raw corn as, as candy I, corn. If I could raise candy corn, I would. I'd love it. <laughs> it is phenomenal. I, raise candy I shelled 200 bushel candy corn this year. I'm fucking eating it all. Every bit of it. Yeah. I love it. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the peeps on that. I'd rather have peeps as candy corn. Oh, not corn. me. Not pe- I can't yeah. do peeps. I, I like marshmallows, but as soon as you sprinkle them with Heroin, they, they don't taste that. like marshmallows. So no, that's they the don't. thing. It, it tastes different. They do something different to it. I mean, I, one a year is plenty. I don't mm. need like a package of them, but one a year is plenty. I, I don't even need that. But I can eat peeps. I can't eat candy corn. Nope. Candy corn and peanuts. Circus peanuts are fucking Literally, disgusting. Literally, the last time, this last fall, I think we went to the store or whatever, I was frantic because I could not find candy corn and peanuts. Oh, I, I had the bag of peanuts in the car and I was like, where is the candy corn? Where is the candy Which corn? I, don't even care I was you freaking mix it with, out. I don't care if you mix it with peanuts. No, I'll it has to be corn. mixed with peanuts. I'll, I'll eat it both ways. You need that salt sugar mixture. But circus peanuts. No, you're, they're amazing. You're nuts. No. Sorry, I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Literally, the other weekend I went to my mom and dad's and they went to Royal King and they bought a bag of circus peanuts just for me because they knew I was coming oh. over. That's my that's version nice of dying and going to hell is eating circus peanuts. Oh gosh, if I was on I naked and was... afraid and all they 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 airdropped a pallet of circus peanuts, I'm tapping out after day two. Fuck it, I'm that's out. Hilarious. I'm done. I'm not eating them. I think it's the nostalgia though because my grandpa always ate circus peanuts, and so whenever I'd go visit him, he'd give me circus peanuts, and so I'd sit and eat circus peanuts and hang out with my grandpa. You, you eat stupid sauerkraut. I can't even stand the smell of sauerkraut. Oh I'm not German. I don't eat sauerkraut. I don't even like the smell of it. I'm out. I am German. And I think I you are. Do you my, like sauerkraut? You have German no. ancestors. Yes. My, my personal hell would be strapped to a 30 to 20 power shift gas. Oh, God. With nothing to drink but coffee. And a bag of circus. Candy, candy corn. corn. <laughs> and. He's describing my best dream. <laughs> Okay, so let me back up here. A thirty twenty gas when you power I don't know shift. About that. I don't when you click that. it from seventh to eighth, it just dies. Unless you're going down a big ass hill, yeah, it's just dead. Now you can find the gears in because the deer actually put them in a row. But let's just say it's a puzzle shifter. It doesn't matter to me either way. They both suck. And gears one through six, you had nothing to start. With. Yeah, you had nothing. You know, like a buddy of mine told me actually just today, those are amazing shifters. I'm like, what do you mean amazing shifters? Like, you're amazed every time you get it in gear because you just randomly yank some shit around and finally it goes whatever direction. When I was at Equity, the 3020 power shift gas that we had, yep. we drove it like a hydrostat. You just yep. shoved it all the way forward or all yep. the way back. Well, you shift it from 7th to 8th, it just dies. Yep, junk. Because it's gas. So I'm strapped onto that piece of shit. I'm getting ready to pull a no count ship box wagon up to a gleaner to unload that it clearly can't unload in. My only drink I have is coffee, and my only snack is candy corn. That's my personal And life. your wife pulls into the wrong car. Pulls into the wrong <laughs> We're done. We're out. Yep. Yep. That's my... Speaking of wagons, so you always see the meme of Joe Blow's got a new RV, and he's pulling a wagon with yep. it to get by the taxes. Yep. Yesterday, and this is a fact, a good friend of both of ours can back this up. We saw a pretty nice Winnebago pulling a gravity wagon into Effingham. Nice. No kidding. Blowing down 32 with a gravity wagon. I could not get my phone out in time to get a picture of it because I was mesmerized for a second. I actually thought there was a truck in between him. Nope. He was pulling it with the RV. I don't know if he's trying to beat the tax guy. Or if he, what he was doing. Anytime but he can fuck the IRS, I'm all for it. Whatever he was doing, 
He was pulling a gravity wagon. I like it. I like where he's at. Yeah. Maybe he had a corn burning stove at home, and that's what he was doing. But he was pulling a, with an RV. And it, was a full, it was a full-blown RV, not some shit box, kind of a Ford F-350 with a topper. This was a full-blown. This one had the, the little dolly wheels on the back, so when you go through the fucking step <laughs> driveways yeah. at the back, you don't drag. It just rolls. No, this was a pusher RV. This was a full-blown RV. Oh, like shit. Clark W. Griswold, like, when it was cool shit. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Chances are the guy was eating his steak medium rare and eating yeah, his hamburger is undercooked. Eat circus peanuts, and, you know. Hey, say whatever you want. You married me. I'm not. I, I, I can't do circus peanuts. I can't. You didn't leave him any choice, Carolyn. Christ, you hounded him like a dog. I mean, you did. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. I had no that. choice. She did. She was yeah. hanging on me. <laughs> yeah, it was it was miserable. I saw it all happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was like Herbie's. About the time I got rid of her, she came <laughs> Yeah. Bang, there she was. <laughs> I'm going to laugh because the exact opposite happened, but True. You, it's your story. You tell how you I was more or less a squatter. I moved in with her, and I never left. <laughs> and I couldn't get him to leave. That's so. true. Well, well, like, a guy in a Dodge couldn't go Let's very far. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Dodge. You didn't have the Dodge. No, I had the Duramax. You had the what? Duramax. No, you had, the, you had the Dodge when you guys hooked up originally. No, nope, he had the Duramax. No, oh. I might have had the, I had the Dodge, I think. For a little bit, it was the Dodge. Guys, we have proved tonight I have the memory like Well, this is true. She's going to tell you she what had the had the Duramax, I assure you. Well, either way, it was probably screwed on getting away. <laughs> yeah. He was desperate. Although his Dodge is still going. The Duramax he was desperate, and I felt but. sorry for him. So I was like, come here. I will home you for she a while. She takes it all the strays. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. When we have an animal on our farm we can't get rid of, we just give it to Carolyn. Exactly. She and takes I'm care like, of it. The if part it needs bottle fat, she doesn't home. care. The part where she screwed up was I didn't get neutered until after three kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have your pet spayed or neutered. We used to send our kids here just like, oh, we can't get rid of them here, Carolyn. We raise them for a little bit. We need them a day off. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. But it is what it is. If they turn to liking coffee, I'm going to blame you. That, that is my number one goal now. I'm going to make sure your kids drink a gallon of coffee a day. Your daughter will drink coffee because she'll, no, she she'll be glued to the books in college. Like, I've got to study for this math test. Oh, she will be glued to the books. She will be. Because she's Kelly a rule follower coffee. like Carolyn and Kelly have raised her to be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But she, she can't stay in coffee either. Good you know, I'm, I'm good there. She'll get there. She'll okay. get there. My wife's a, my wife's a total things. rule follower. When the oh, whole Max sure. deal started, oh, yeah. she fucking cringed at night going into Walmart. Yeah. When the old man was following me, I mean, sir, 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 you got to wear a mask, sir. And I had all three kids right beside me. And I said, see, kids, you ain't got to be a sheep. I said, look at this yeah, clown. Exactly. We just walked right out of the store. I hate confrontation. And then when we walked out of the store, because I had to make it a point to my kids. I'm like, it's so yep. fucking stupid. Yep. So we walked down to the kids. I'm like, see, kids. I'm like, look, this, this guy's a fucking clown right here. He's telling everybody to wear a mask. We just made it through the whole store with no mask on. We're still alive. Like, I went into Walmart for the first time in probably three or four years, just a week ago. They have someone sitting at the door to advise you to wear a mask. Mm-hmm. But they don't actually tell you that. Right. You know, if you're willing to be a rebel, which I'm willing to be, because, well, frankly, I think the mask thing's ridiculous. Yeah. So I go get what little few things I needed to get. And I probably would have went to Dollar General, but I knew prior from your videos that I could get by with not wearing a mask at Walmart. And I was, I'll just not even get it. If I have to wear a mask, I won't even get it. Mm-hmm. I'll just go home. I'll just make it from from scratch, whatever I got to do. So we're, I'm heading out, and then I walk by the self-checkout, which also has another person watching them, which I think the whole time, seems like you could just be checking people out. Yeah. Why do we have somebody watching the self-checkouts that could just be running a register? Mm-hmm. We got 15 self-checkouts, one person watching those, and one register actually open. The whole thing just infuriates me from beginning to end. But I made it out of there. I'm still alive to tell the story. Without a mask, I'm good to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's very rule following. She'll be one of the first ones on the train to Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. No. Ireland's on. Unless, make it, make unless, it roll cheeseburgers. Unless they say there's no circus peanuts at Auschwitz. Yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah, she's I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not going, going on this there. train. I'll catch the 3 o'clock train. I'm not going yeah. on this. 3 o'clock one has peanuts. I'm good for that one. Yeah. Yep. I am a rule follower. Not this kid. Until it's something I very, very strongly believe in. And then there will be heck She's pay. borderline anti-vaxxer, though. If you say, hey. We should really get our kids vaccinated for such a... 
I'll roll the dice if my kids need polio, but we'll get it. I am not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I am not anti-vax. I want to clear for that. I am not anti-vax. I am just anti-things that have not. She's anti -vax. Yeah, you'll feed your kids coffee and raw hamburger. She's, she's not anti-vax, or she's anti-needles in the arm. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so I'm not anti-vax. But you don't like let's needles. go back to the whole cheeseburger thing. Did raw cheeseburgers kill your grandma and grandpa? Did they kill your great grandma and grandpa? Might no. have. They're both. They're all dead. Well, now they are. But I mean, <laughs> that's what killed them. Yeah, they, could be. No, they did all that stuff, and they were just fine. You don't know that. They, they could have died from that. Life killing. expectancy then was a lot less than it is now. Just say it. Just well, say it. Oh my gosh, there's so many things. So many things. To no, say. for I'm just shit. My wife's not an anti vaxxer. I just gave her hell. Because I fucked with her here. I'm a anti month or two flu ago. and COVID nineteen vaccine. I was like, That's Yeah, it. I think I'm gonna get the COVID vaccine and she like shit a fucking brick one day in the fucking kitchen. I'm like, nah. I think I'm gonna get it and she was like, oh, You're gonna get the vaccine and she just she didn't know what she was beside herself. I was. But, well, because of who you are as a person and it's so completely polar opposite to what your beliefs. But no, our was, kids have all been vaccinated. We're good. My kids don't have polio. We're fine. We're fine. But if you say, yeah, we've got to get the kids a COVID-19 vaccine to go to school. No, nope, fuck it. We're out. We're homeschooling. We're out. We're done. Agreed. Which I agree with. That's I'm cool. with you there. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. There's so many things, but I don't want to get into that political debate, so I'll yeah. just stay out of it. So, That's fine. We can yeah. do that. We'll just feed yeah. our kids red meat and circus peanuts, and they'll exactly. be fine. Yeah. And they will be fine. I assure you. They no, well, not circus fine. peanuts, but no. If we go back to living the way I lived, we will be just fine. I ate red meat. I ate circus peanuts. We grew everything in our garden. We shot and killed all of our meat. You had elephants in your garden, huh? <laughs> yes, circus we peanuts. Did, sorry, we did. <laughs> Little known fact, there was a few I, I, elephants was, back here in the day. I'm just toying we with kept them hidden back in the trees. I get it. So, I get no, it. They'll be just fine. I'm not looking forward to going back to like the early 1900s like you guys lived, but <laughs> uh, I'm going to like settle in, in the 1950s. Maybe we'd have to have a bunch of. I'll take the 80s. I, I take the 80s. Reagan was great. I'll take the 80s. Yeah. Reaganomics. I'm if we had to go back to. Homesteading days, I would be a hundred percent fine. So that would he be will own. never that would ever be survive own. that. I will tell you, he, this. He you want to know bored. the number one torture for me in the fucking world is camping. Camping, mm -hmm. I Can't fucking hate it. it. No, I don't like camping. Because well, because ever well for nowadays it's glamping. You know, you pull in the biggest RV you can with the biggest fucking TV, and it's, it's like okay, well that's not camping. <laughs> no. Which, second of all, that sucks. So let's load up all of our shit. Let's spend all day Thursday loading up all this shit in this camper <laughs> to true. drive 20 miles to plug this fucker in and unload everything <laughs> again and then load it back up on Sunday. Well, and then that. clean it on Monday yeah. so we can get ready for Thursday. It's like, why don't you guys pay me 20 bucks, come to my fucking house, and we'll sit on the shade tree and drink beer. <laughs> and you have to load up an option. Will Carolyn make us some well-done cheeseburgers? Oh, absolutely. Circus peanuts, whatever you want. <laughs> Bring the kids. We don't care. I'll even make brown gravy. I'll throw that yeah. in. I'll, I'll go all out. I didn't you know this was an option. You don't have to load nothing up. I mean, a round trip, you're talking three hours tops. You show up, drink beer, and go home. That's, yeah. that's it. No kids because we're very hands-off parenting. <laughs> don't get hurt. We're here's the keys to the, 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 the four-wheeler. Don't yep. show back up. Yeah. I agree yeah. with that. I'm just, if, if here's you, a box full of fireworks. Take that with you. Here's a lighter. I've actually <laughs> seen that, and that worked out good. <laughs> it did. Everything was they fun. They had the best night of their lives. They came back with an empty box. They had a great time. Yeah, we, that was, what, a year ago? We gave yeah. my son, who was 11 at the time, your son would have been eight, eight. seven, yeah, seven, eight. Seven, eight. Yeah. We gave him 5,000 firecrackers and a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> don't bother us. Don't show up for a while. No, actually, we said, don't get hurt. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. And nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. hurt. They had the best night of their lives. And oh we laughed no. so hard. They talked about that for two weeks. They did. No. Now, I do like camping. I loved it when I was a little kid. I don't mind it now. We not don't me. have a camper. My wife's not going camping. My daughter and I go from time to time. Not me. I like it. It's fine. But I understand where you're coming from. I'm I'm not going to do camping 
now because I, I don't have to. But if I had to live that kind of lifestyle, I could do it. Well, if I had to, I could, but I'm not going to voluntarily do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I like a volunteer. raw cheeseburger. If that's all he has to eat, he'll eat it. He's not going to voluntarily do it. Okay? I mean, he has fire. Yeah. I mean, if we were I starving, I would voluntarily time, walk like to Effingham and yeah. get food. But, yeah. but, I but he has a car, so he'll drive. Just to say I could. I rode my bike home from Effingham one time because a woman, when I worked at Equity, this gal was into marathons and shit just mm-hmm. like you, mm-hmm. bet me that I couldn't ride my bike home. And you almost died and had a heart attack. But. Yeah. I, Fully dressed in jeans, work boots, the whole works. I'm like, yeah, I can do this just to prove you wrong. And I, I really did thought we was going to have to call the EMT with like a mile from home. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. I'm fucking seeing spots. Things are getting dark. You you really need to call somebody. She's like, no, you can make it. And I drank some water, and I barely made it. And when I got home, I'm like, you're going to have to come here and pick your fucking bike up because this bike's staying here. I'm not taking this bike anywhere else. And I'm done. I've never rode a bike over Birmingham again. That was it. That was 10 miles. <laughs> and to me, I'd be like, and it was oh, hot. do you think, can I run to Effingham? Oh, that's a challenge. I'm going to do it. And I do it in a heartbeat. Well, okay. try to go early tomorrow and bring us home some gravy. <laughs> yes, do that. Brown please. or white? Either one. If you're gonna, willing to walk to run, slash run to Effingham, go to KFC and Long Gun Silvers. I'll dip the fish no. in the brown oh, gravy. Oh, my gosh, no. Nope. I'm not going morning. to Wong John's. Can't do it. I'm with you there. It's disgusting. So, you need to tell us, Carolyn, were you the cool kid in school? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was the cool kid in school, in my mind. Like, what did you do on the bus rides home? I read a book. <laughs> <laughs> nerd alert. Nerd alert. I am a, Ooh, I will calm own it. Calm down. 100%, I was the biggest nerd in high school you ever met. Still are. I would That's read true. books, the hour ride there, the hour ride home. Let me get I, a study hall you actually studied. I did. I did my homework <laughs> and I did my friend's homework. Uh, <laughs> so uh, our English teacher. How did teacher, you end up with Tony then? That doesn't make any I know, sense. I know. Because I went to school with Tony. That's Opposites attract. That's true. Like, yeah. So our English teacher would offer extra credit. Like you could write a poem or a short story or whatever. Well, a I, was, short story. I was really good at that. <laughs> so God. I would do that. I already had an A, but why not make it an A++? I mean, and my friends would be like, hey, can you write a poem for me? Because my grade's getting kind of low. And I'd be like, yeah, sure. So I'd write poems and all sorts of stuff for all my friends. This that was who I was. I was in band. I was in pep club. I was even in chess club. I know you're in band because I wore your band uniform, uniform for, for Halloween, Halloween one year. Damn near one first place. But the that was my one rebellious out. moment. We were supposed to return those at the end of the year, and I did not. Ooh, calm down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Such a badass. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. I, yeah, no. No, we were absolute polar opposites. If you and I had actually gone to high school together at the That's same true. time, you probably would have been making fun of me, pushing me down in the hall. Yeah, that's what I was telling my wife about college. We went to the same college. We were there briefly at the same time. But had we known each other in college, we wouldn't be friends. Yeah. No. You'd have, you were, what, eighth grade when I was a senior? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because you graduated right before I came in. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I heard all about you. And well, I was sure. like, he is a terrible human being. What's going on? <laughs> that's not true. I was there the whole time. He was exactly. fine. Nick and vouch. I was fine. Yeah. And that is 100% to this day even. It's what's so funny because everyone's like, you and Tony, like, we never thought you two would make sense, but you do. And I think it's we balance each other out. Whenever he wants to go way to the extreme, I'm like, nope, I'm going to rein you in. And whenever I'm, like, super cautious, he's like, push yourself a little, Carolyn. Push yourself. (laughs) That's probably true. I would agree with that. You're very rule follow-y. I keep you in line. I keep, you do. I, I keep everything in our house in order and in line. And then that she way does. You, you could, I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If she died on Monday, I'd be dead by Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. It's over. Or remarried by Wednesday. We don't know. Well, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. He needs somebody to keep him in line. This is true. Yep. I, we started dating on Monday, and by Wednesday I was moved in and have never left. I know. And the fact that after I accidentally hung your shirt up inside out in my closet where I was paying rent and you were not and you flew off the handle and I said, Who hangs your shirt up inside (laughs) out? A tired person who's working 70 hours a week. That's who. Check yourself. That's completely wrong. (laughs) 
Sometimes you just put stuff in the closet and you're just tired. I still hang his shirts up inside out, and I don't care. <laughs> I no, gotta keep. I if, gotta reel back. At forty years old, he cannot figure out how to put his shirt on right side out. I can't help you. You're done. Well, there's that. I don't know. Sometimes you gotta reel her back in. She yeah. gets a little rebellious and wants to, you know. You just put her on a lawn more. Yep. Let her go. Let me run in a few Medi- trees. Meditate for a little bit. Yeah. So the funny thing is about mowing, like, it's it's my two hours of peace and quiet. But I I won't say I will vouch for all women out there. But for most women, we have that two hours of silence. What we're doing is we're sitting and thinking about everything during the day, what we need to worry about for the next day, what we did wrong that day, and we're just hashing all of that out. Just going do you, through do you everything. ever think about what you did wrong that day? I I blame it on somebody else. I'm like, <laughs> well, I gotta write the stupid fucking engineer. <laughs> <laughs> completely designed it wrong. I did something wrong. I was completely unaware. Yeah, I didn't notice. No, nope. yeah. and I won't say all women, but I think for the most part, we overthink things. Oh, so absolutely. So we're like, you You guys were talking about, and I don't know if it was this one or the one we talked about earlier, where you just fly off the handle, but then you're just done over it. Whereas we're like, oh, what did I do wrong? What can I do better to correct this? We're constantly thinking about the next 10 steps this, ahead. This is exactly how women think. True story. She'll back me up on it. When we decided to start having kids, we started trying to have our first kid, and... She woke me up one night at 10 o'clock at night, bawling. I'm not pregnant. I can't never get pregnant. Oh, this is so hard. I go back to sleep. She wakes me up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Hey, I'm pregnant. I'm like, <laughs> eight hours ago, you just were fucking bawling, telling me you were not pregnant. And you woke me up at 6 o'clock in the morning saying you're pregnant. And she was. I was. I'm like... And after that, we become very cautious because if I blink my eyes at her, she gets pregnant. <laughs> yes. It's... I would like Give to say, a break, girl. We we are one of the, we're very very fortunate and very oh lucky. absolutely absolutely. So when we decided to have our first kid, it was literally a month later. I was pregnant. I hear you. The last kid kid hitched a ride home from Alaska with us, <laughs> totally unannounced. <laughs> we didn't buy the plane ticket. She just come home with us. And yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it we, happened. We were we were at the point where we were like, well, he that was when we were in the depths of his Lyme disease issue and stuff like that. And I was like, the last thing we need is a baby. He cannot handle this. And I will never, ever forget it. I knew I was pregnant. And he was sitting at the kitchen table. I had made a 9 by 13 pan of brownies. And he was eating brownies for breakfast. And I came out of the bathroom and I was bawling. And I was like, I have no clue how to tell you this. I was like, I'm pregnant. And he took a bite of his brownie and looked at me and he said, well, I told you you were. <laughs> and that was it. And I was just like, because I was just like, oh, my gosh, mentally he can't handle this. We have his health issues. We just bought a farm. I have no health insurance. How in the world are we going to do this? And he's like, well, I told you you were. And that was the end of it. That's like I said, the big the big events. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And I had spent like the three days leading up to that, <laughs> like, you like, come, stressing if, about every single thing, like crying if you myself. Those brownies if, up, that'd if, have been a big deal. If you would have come out and said, this stupid pregnancy test, I can't get it to work, I'd have flipped out this Chinese <laughs> fucking piece of shit. God damn it, I told you not to buy this shit. I would have flipped yeah. out, but you come out and you're like, I'm The pregnant. best like, was whenever we got pregnant with my, our second one, I let like I wanted to surprise him, so I left the pregnancy test. Oh yeah, that was a whole big story. On, yeah, I, I even had that on Facebook back in the day. So I come, we were right in the middle of farmer time. <coughs> I was tired as shit. I come in that night, and I and I was literally running on zero sleep, and I was washing my hands in the sink, and I'm like, why the hell did she leave the third? Because she leaves us pregnancy test laying right here on the sink because she knew I'd go in to wash my hands. I'm like. Why did you leave the fucking thermometer laying on the sink? <laughs> he did. And so finally I grabbed it. I I think I took it in the bedroom. I, you came up to me and you... No, actually you just ignored it, I think. And I was like waiting for you to say something. And I was like, well, did you see? 
And you were like, yeah, why'd you leave the thermometer on the counter? And I was like, that's not a thermometer. <laughs> and I said, go back and look at it again. And then you came out and you're like, what does this mean? Two pink lines. And yeah. I was like, I'm pregnant. I didn't have the directions. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> it said plus. I knew that's what everyone would tester. say, pregnant, not pregnant, Tony. Yeah. That was whenever I learned that I couldn't do any of these fun, creative things. I had no. to write it out for you and Crayon. Tony, I am pregnant. We are having a baby. We got some other stories that I won't tell. You know where I'm going with this about the fun, creative. I won't. I won't make a mockery of you on the podcast. <laughs> yes, don't because I don't know where yeah. you're going with this. So don't. Yeah, I. I just. I. No, you just got to spell it out. I'm okay. very. I'm very black and white. You always tell me that. You like. And it's taken me, like, several years to get to that point where, like, so I always tell everybody I'm a very affectionate, huggy kind of person. Not whatever. Me. He is not. His worst I think life. I hugged my dad on my wedding day, possibly when he brushed up against me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> mom, maybe two, three times my I've life. I've hugged your mom more than you have hugged They were mom. great parents, very loving parents, but we just weren't, we weren't the huggy, touchy, feely type whatever right whereas we hug kiss whatever and i've just learned that if i need that i have to tell him so like when i had my surgery this past september i was like i'm gonna come out of that anesthesia i'm gonna be emotional i need you to hug me and hold my hand and he's like okay and i came out of it and i'm bawling hysterically and i was like hold my hand and he's like Okay, I will. Like, it was like the 40 year old virgin. Oh my god, damn hand, man. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I'm like, just hold my hand. Yeah. I'm and that's fine. That's, that's, I've learned that. I just need to write it out for you, tell you what you need to do. You knew what you were getting. When <laughs> I you do. 100%. Yeah. That's why I tell everybody I cannot get mad whenever we have disagreements because from day one, he is the same person, sticks to it. I knew that going into it. So if I get mad because I'm having a bad day and crying and he doesn't know he needs to hug me, that's kind of on me. And I, well, I'm sure I'm going to receive hate for like that. I've told but I feel daughter. like I need to tell him. And I have. I'm like, Tony, I've had a terrible day. I need you to give me a hug. And he's like, okay. And he'll do it as long as I tell him what he needs to do. And that's fine. Like I've told my daughter, your mother's greatest quality is also her worst quality. Emotions do not affect her. So that's a great quality, but it's also a negative quality. So I'm married to Joseph Stalin, female version. <laughs> Love her to death. Wouldn't trade her for the world. Emotions aren't her thing. So Everybody's made different. I think there uh, are some people who th see things in black and white. There are people who see things emotionally. And yes, you have to figure as, out what your partner needs. As far and as women go, my wife is totally strategic, not emotional. That's what and I that's love a about great, her. It's a great quality about her. I know a if I have an issue, I can message her very and she'll tell me. negative as well. Because you are a... You're a touchy-feely, emotional kind of person. Well, I don't know that I'm emotional necessarily. <laughs> I am touchy-feely. I, I am touchy-feely, though, Carolyn. <laughs> the, the only time I'm emotional is with my kids. And I, and I don't mean this like as a protective parent, like, oh, you can't yell at my kids. I could care less. You know, my kids need to do it. But, like, if, let's say we were just sitting at a bus stop like Forrest Gump and some kid just come up out of the blue and just slap my daughter. I'm going to go from zero to fucking 60, instantly yeah. off the fucking charts yeah. in nothing flat. Where in other areas, it's like I don't really show emotions. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's something with the kids that I, I don't know. What, You're what the, like, yeah, I would agree with that. So like our little girl, she's three, almost four years old. She, as soon as he comes home, she's immediately, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And he immediately drops everything, hugs her, kisses her, does all the things. Whereas, if I want a hug, I literally <laughs> have to be dad. like, I, I have to be bawling hysterically, emotional breakdown. He's like, yeah. well, If, if I go to the door saying, Tony, 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 I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. which is fine. It's, it's just something different with with kids and like I say I don't mean that as far as my kids can do no wrong yeah. or don't yell at my kids it's nothing like that but it's just it's, I don't know it's different when you have kids I guess I don't know yeah and it's different for different kids yeah yeah well and as they get older too like the older two 
they're not like that. They could yeah. care less, so I I don't do that. But the youngest one, yeah. If, if I could push the pause button on her, I would, because I still like yeah. having that. And mm-hmm. I, I've said for years, I'm going to be a horrendous empty nester. I like to have my yeah. kids here. When my yeah. kids leave, I'm, I'm with you. That's I don't know what I'm going to do. It's 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 not going to be good. I, You're going to hang out with your wife. I know, and that's where it's putting <laughs> me with back some to. uncooked meat. Exactly, and not brown gravy. Yeah. What am I going to do? And we not give her hugs. The best time yeah. in the entire world. And, it, and it's the catch-22 because you can't shelter your kids or, or hold them down either. You gotta I can them. tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to their house and I'm breaking some shit. I'm <laughs> yep. going to rub my fingers down the walls. I'm going to break some shit. Yep, I'm going to get some dishes the out. Carpet. I'm going to leave them everywhere. I'm going to throw some clothes down here or there. I'm not following any directions. I'm going to completely lose my sense of time. And when some told, somebody told me to do something, and I'm just, it's going to be total recklessness. Yeah. That's I'll what I'll never forget. So we went on a family vacation to Washington, D.C., and I put my feet on the dash of the van and my mom like completely lost it and she was like i can't wait till you have your own vehicle i'm gonna put my feet on your dash all the time and i was like chill out mom it's not a big deal but now as a parent i'm like i'm right there with you actually you know, we, <laughs> I'm should, right we should do that tomorrow. i should call your mom and be like hey you remember that time she put your her feet on your dash <laughs> come over tomorrow let's just see this is this is cold oh. bluff Come on, put your feet on her dash. She would. Cold. I guarantee you no, she, she would. would. She, she would even come to her house to eat supper. <laughs> she would. She it's, would. Fu- it's funny because her mom and me are like totally on the same page. Like, I'm the type, if they're having family dinner and it's like, I don't feel like going, I don't go. And that's just the way it is. But her mom's the same way. Mm-hmm. If we said we're having the most extravagant family dinner, everybody in the county's coming, you need to be here. And her mom's like, no, nah, I'm not going. I got stuff She wouldn't going. go. Where she's just like her dad. Her, I could call her dad tomorrow and be like, hey, man, come over tomorrow noon. I'm having my one neighbor over who's an alcoholic. We're having cheese sandwiches. He'd be here. <laughs> well and done, he? or? Yeah. He would, wouldn't he? He would. He, your dad's just a nice guy. Or your mom, she's just like me. She did. And, and, and my mom's in the- I want to clarify. My mom is the nicest person in the she entire is. world. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Yeah. But yeah. she's she's like Tony. You you get what you. And know. that's why me and your mom get along so well. Exactly. Because and and to be fair, me and her mom are not close as far as we don't talk much, we don't interact much. But it's like we're on the same page. It's like <laughs> you're at a family dinner. It's like yeah, we click. We're good. <laughs> yeah. She knows. <laughs> you know, you you've got different friends in life. You know, whatever some. Some friends, you're friends with them on their terms. Some mm-hmm. friends, you're friends with on your terms. Yep. You know, same deal on that. And, and I do have to admit, I am the luckiest person in the world because I actually do love my in-laws to death. A lot of yeah, people me too. bitch I'm, about I'm them and I hate my... Yeah. I mean, her dad would talk to that chalkboard if it would listen. <laughs> but but I like talking to your dad because it's not one of them where he's just annoying. I mean, he's just, yeah. he just likes to talk, you know. Cause it, and I, I think that's because he's a truck driver and he don't get to talk to people much. Yeah. So it's not like when he talks to you, it's just annoying. It's like, shut up. You know, I mean, yeah. you can actually talk to the guy and have a good time talking to him. Yeah. He just likes to talk. Where her mom's polar opposite. Mm-hmm. If you just walked over and been like, hey, Donna, and then that was all you said for six hours, she's fine with it. No hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> she can kill it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's too busy. She's got too much stuff going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. The scary thing is the older I get, so like everyone always laughs, you know, my mom's just always doing stuff. She never, ever, ever sits down. Huh. wonder who that sounds like. And uh, I'm the same. <laughs> ding, ding, I, I am the same exact way. And I'm uh, like, I just never sit down. I'm just like, oh, well, I got to do this. 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 And I was just, and like, as you were growing up, I was like, oh, man, mom, just sit down and relax, you know, whatever. But now I'm like, oh, no, I don't have time for that. I have no time for that. You should work on that. <laughs> but also, my it. wife is one of these who is Life's too short. busier than I want to be, but yet she'll pile even more stuff on. She volunteers for yeah. this and this, and this, which I'm fine with because without women, yeah, most of this sure. stuff would never happen in the community because guys like me and you are going to be like, fuck it. Yeah. Just, everybody just donate 10 bucks. We're going to call it good. We yeah. don't need all the guys. We're fine. <laughs> Where she wants to have the dinners and the bake sales and the this, yeah. that, and the other. And it's like, yeah, that's too much work. Yeah. No. Where us, I'm fine charge us 10 bucks, buy a keg of beer. Yeah. We'll, keep, we'll, yeah. we'll buy the beer at eight bucks a piece. We don't care. Yeah, we don't care. <laughs> Wait, and I'm, ha- I'm happy to charge you that. 
But if they need me to do this over here, I'm going to do that. Yeah, right. You're, you're busy right now mopping up where everybody spilled a little bit of beer and <laughs> yeah. cleaning the porta potties. We're like, we don't care. We'll piss in the grass. <laughs> yeah, that was like whenever we went to uh, Mike Burkhart's table, everyone was sitting around talking. And I was like, well, I don't want them to be stuck cleaning all this up. So there I was cleaning all the tables because I just didn't want them to get stuck with that. So I was like, well, I'll take care of this. And that's why I invite Carolyn over once in a while. Mm-hmm. If I know there's a big yeah. deal going on, because stuff gets cleaned up afterwards. Exactly. Right. And I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. You're like, yeah, we just been behind that refrigerator for a long time. <laughs> Next thing you know, she's wheeling it out. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's just the way it is. I'm I'm more of the type. I'll pay the money to drink the beer. Leave me alone. You know, where you'd rather cook spaghetti and. I'll, I'm Make it 10 more than more. happy to do all the things. And I'm thankful for you guys. I truly more am. More than happy. Because without you guys, it honestly wouldn't happen. If if our community tomorrow, all the women vanished, and they said, hey, you guys need to have a fundraiser for the school, you that, guys it's, it's literally going to be a beer garden. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And in the morning, we're going to be like, well, who the fuck's going to clean this mess up? Because we're not. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> well, next time, we'll have it someplace else. This place yeah. we just said, exactly. yeah. <laughs> we'll find out where the women are. We'll have it there. Yeah. It's not clean up. So we are thankful for you guys, but yes, for sure. That's just that's just the difference between which guys look at it logistically too. Where women, they look at it logistically, but yet they're willing to cave a lot more because guys are like, "Well, you need plates for pork burgers. Just give them a napkin." Yeah. <laughs> or women, yeah. you got you got plates, then you get well, you got to have something to go with. You got potato salad, and yeah. this, this, and this. Yeah, you know, what she needs is another pork burger. Yeah, exactly. Guys are like, just make solid pork burgers, no sides, and a bunch of beer. We're good. Yeah, that's, good. that's all we need. You're good. But at the same time, you guys appreciate that potato salad and baked beans. For sure, <laughs> if we have to make it, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree. I, I'm one of those people. I think that. Um, men and women each have their own role and bring different things to the table For sure. and they're both equally important and you're right we do appreciate it and that's where the modern day farm wife has changed from what it was in the 50s and 60s you know now it's career women which is fine but you know back then you know the guy come home to the big home cooked meal and now the women just legitimately don't have time for that because they're doing careers whatever so i'm gonna have to throw it back to you that you know you guys dropped the ball on that deal but you know we'll <laughs> i didn't drop the ball My. i'm still that but <laughs> but you know it it how I many times have changed i mean you know and, and truthfully 40 50 years ago men probably would have pitched in on the fundraiser like that and yeah and made it made it go to where now it's like nah let's just drink beer <laughs> It's a different deal now, yeah. for sure. I think everybody's just so much busier now. You know, there's yeah. just so much more going on. There's no know? downtime. Yeah. I mean, Tony and I are old enough to remember a life before smartphones, when you actually had had downtime. Mm-hmm. Now there's no downtime. People can com- can communicate with us any hour of the day. Yeah. For whatever reason, that's a whole other rabbit hole that we'll go down in another podcast. But I'm like, there's really no getting away from anything now. Yeah. When when we were growing up, I and mean, you had a bag phone, when you got out of your truck, yeah. you were done. Yeah. Nobody was calling you. Yeah. Nobody, you weren't getting text messages, and, et cetera. No Facebook, no TikTok, And that no even nothing. brings it back. You know, I've had guys older than me, and, and I don't agree with this, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong because I don't know, but I don't, I, I don't think they're right. The, they let on nowadays, like, you know, if, if people get, let's just say December 23rd, Plus the twenty fourth and fifth off. They're like, well, we, we never got that right. You know, we hell we worked Christmas Day, and it's like, no, yeah. you didn't. When I was a kid, everything shut down at Christmas time. Whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. it was a big deal. Yeah, and I, and I almost think it's worse now. Oh, hell, most sure. places work agree. work at least a half a day, if not a full day, Christmas Eve. Shut down Christmas Day, and the next day you're right back working. Let's take Black Friday for ex- instance. You yeah. know, Black Friday used to yeah. be a big deal. It was midnight. Yeah. And now it, they just keep backing it down and down. So now people are working Thanksgiving Day for That's this I mean. Black Friday well, sale. Yeah, and this is a whole other topic that we will probably dabble into in another podcast. But I'm like, do you know anybody that doesn't have a straight up eight to five factory job that literally doesn't have any communication to their work world after hours? 
Yeah. I mean, I remember back when your brother got his first pager. Yep. For work. So, as soon as he got paged, he had to the party was shut. We were done. He was gone. Whatever. You know, and that was, that's been many a moon ago. Yeah. And it's just escalated since then. And we'll go down that rabbit hole some other time. But, you know, now you, you can't get away from work mm-hmm. in most now, average if, jobs. If you look now, and, and I'm just talking, you know, don't count the banks or the post office, you know, this federal stuff. Walmart, all that stuff. Good Friday, it don't matter. They're open all their yeah. days. All the yes. Time. You know, so yes. I don't agree with the fact that, well, my God, when I was your age, you know, we never got them days off. Bullshit, I think you got a little bit more. Oh, for sure. And like I said, you know, now, you know, it may be a simple text message at 630 at night when you when you left your job at five. And it's a it's a three second response. But you add those up. Well, you, you know, at seven o'clock, you get another one, some other question to set another. And we're all more than willing to do that for the most part. But you start adding that stuff up. You're not off work until you go to sleep. Yeah. Right. And that and that causes other situations you know? this whole where everybody can get a hold of you at all times at all hours you may clock out at 5 p.m but yeah. if somebody messaged you at six yeah. you're going to answer well, that email absolutely. and then you're going to answer the second one at seven you're going to answer the next one at eight yeah. and you're even though like you said it's a 10 15 minute ordeal that's still taking out of from time from what and, you're and doing you know, and every relaxing. generation thinks that you had it worse no oh, for sure kids and, and and there's no question. My grandpa had it way worse than my dad, and my dad had it way worse than I did. Yeah. And my kids probably, or I I guess I said that backwards. You know, my grandpa was the worst, yeah. and dad had a little better. I was a little better, and and my kids are a little better oh, yeah. than I had it. But in my eyes, it's like you know, goddamn, I never done that when I was your age. You know. So but it I think is it's a, all it's uh, all perspective. Relative, to the yeah, relative, exactly. Yeah. You know what hardships for us mm-hmm. is is different than what hardships for your parents yeah. were and what hardships but, for our but I, tr- are. I truly do and now I'm not talking vacation you know paid vacation personal days whatever because I you know that's different for each company you know they probably didn't have some of that stuff in, in the 40s 50s whatever but as far as days that a business is open mm-hmm. I'm convinced businesses yeah. are open more days a year now Absolutely. than they were. Well, nobody back, ever shuts down. Back nobody when I was a kid, a little kid, there were certain businesses that weren't open on Sundays even. Mm-hmm. And now, there, yeah. I mean, unless it's a really private, specialized, you know, I mean, say do you guys remember when Walmart became a 24 hour store? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, it used to shut down like everything else. And yeah. it's 24. And now we take that for granted, you yeah. know? Like, Whenever COVID hit and they started shutting down, I remember running to town and I was like, oh my gosh, Walmart's yeah. closed. It's never been closed before. To me, you know? the only things that are closed now is your, <laughs> your local lumber yard. You know, not your Menards, but your local lumber yard, your local appliance mm-hmm. store, whatever, are closed on Sundays. But they were closed back then on Sundays, too. Right. So, yeah. you know, so yeah. you're not getting over on me there. I And I, I still am firmly convinced the American... I don't know if I would say the worker because shifts have changed too. You know, some of these places have went to three shifts, whatever. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't know how to, to word that. Businesses are open more now mm-hmm. than they were when I was a kid. I would argue that to the day I die. Yep. They truly I agree. are. Well, because we live in a world where everything is on demand. Yeah. So if I wake up at midnight and I want to order something, that store yeah. has to be open and ready to take my order. And, and, and they want to do that because that that's where the, you know they get so much yeah. business from that. And they built on that, and it's and great. We're, we're in rural America, and we don't even <laughs> see that to the full effect as Chicago. You know, our yeah. Domino's Pizza closes at 11 o'clock or mm-hmm. whatever time it is at night. I'm sure in these big cities are not closing at 11. Right. I don't know that, but I'm sure well, they're like, not. So, I mean, like the Grubhub app, is big, you can order any kind of food and they'll deliver you whatever time. Obviously, where we live, we can't take advantage of that. But you right. think about New York City, they have people delivering food at 2, 3 a.m., yeah. 4, 4 yeah, a.m. Sure. Even, you know? Yeah, it's... They it's, never shut down. They're going all the time. Well, think about it. When we were kids, even your local co-ops, I mean, now it's literally yeah. almost, and I'm talking three hours shy of working 24 hours a day for several months a year. When I was a kid, you didn't do that. You didn't have you didn't have the technology to work half the night like they do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and these holidays, sure. you know, 4th of July. Hell, when I worked at the co-op, you know, 4th of July, it was hit or miss, and 
generally there's always somebody who, oh, you know, want such and such spray or and you know, it, it, you never got a break from it. Yeah. So I will disagree with a lot of these old timers that well, you know, you guys got it made. You know, we never had time like that off when I was younger. I I think you did. I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it's basically the big holidays now: New Year's Day, Easter, and Christmas Day, and. And that's pretty much it. Fourth of July is hit and miss. I mean, Menards and places, they're open Fourth of July. I mean, yeah. there well, was because they have to They have all their big sales going right. on. You have yeah. your... But when we were kids, there was nothing open on the Fourth of July. <laughs> no. Holiday was the holiday when we were kids. Yep. So. Yeah. And it, it is totally different nowadays. I yeah. will say that. I think, I think where maybe they're coming from, though, is so everything is online now. And so, so many people can do that work from home. So, like, they maybe don't see it as working because you just jump on your computer and do it for an hour from your house versus right. driving into an office or a factory. And the, and, the same, and, and the flip side of that is, I can order something July third off of Amazon and have it July fifth. Well, somebody was working on the fourth to make that happen. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It didn't come from California. And right. Up, yeah. You know, two thousand miles it away, is. by chance. So. Agreed. It's, I don't know, th- things are different. And I'm not knocking the old guys, but I mean, you know, sometimes they, you, you always want to dog the generation below. You know, I'm guilty of it too. I dog my kids mm-hmm. quite a bit because it's just what you do, I guess, when you're a parent. But. Well, I think that we see the advances that technology has given us. It's and, helped and hurt. And so we, we yeah. see where our kids have an easier life versus what we had. And I'm sure our parents see that through the generations and you're like man you guys have no idea but that's kind of what they grew up on you know and there's different hardships that come with that yeah you well know? me and doug the montana farmer talked a couple nights ago if you used to get on on farm talk now and ask some of the younger crowd how many of you guys have farmed four five six seven complete seasons no auto steer didn't even know what it was drove your yeah. own tractor you know the kids that are 20 to Don't, 25 years never, old, never been they've, there, yeah. they've always had it. And I'm not knocking them. I mean, I love auto steer as much as anybody, but yeah. they've never had to do it. Yeah, it would be no different there. than me having to saddle up a horse and ride to town to get groceries. I've never had to do it. Yeah. Right. That's just the way technology advanced. Right. So, yeah. you know, it, it just changes with the times. So, I don't know. I think every single generation you have where you make these advances and it makes life easier, but then you have these new challenges that come with it. It, you know. it made my life easier here because I can buy it on the 3rd of July and have it on the 5th, but it made this guy's life harder because now he had to work the 4th of July 2,000 miles away to make yeah. to make sure that I got it on the 5th, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It, it is what it is. I mean, the, you know, there's no going back. This is here to stay, and yeah. it'll Absolutely. be what it'll be. But nonetheless, it is what it is. But anyway... We got to cut this off. I mean, this has like been going on forever. You guys are talking <laughs> my leg off. The wife's ready to go upstairs, make some brown gravy, <laughs> white gravy with sausage. Well, whatever you think. But nonetheless, just like me and Nick talk, you do all the making, we'll do the eating, and just throw our beer cans everywhere. Mm-hmm. We can live with that. That's fine. I can assure you, if I make white, white gravy versus brown gravy, you'll still eat it. Oh, oh absolutely. Either way, yeah. yeah, we're not picky. Yeah, there's no issue there at all. Whatsoever. Everybody will be eating. Yep. That's sure. all there is to it. Well, anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Keep it right here. We'll catch you next week on the Straightforward Farming Podcast. We'll see you guys.